it ain't perfect, but sometimes you just need the right tool. A tool no one carries that you have to go make yourself. It works. And it ain't stupid if it works. Hey everybody, how's it going? <laughs> uh, it's a perfect day to be working out here. We've got the nice drizzle of rain on the tin roof. This is the perfect temperature to be out here working on old pickle the bus. I am so excited to be back on this project. Got pulled away from it for a little while due to uh, my inability to get certain parts for it. I don't know if they were, if it was a true back order or shipping was a problem or what the real issue was, but we couldn't get them for a while. Finally got them. But in the meantime, I had jumped onto another project, the Land Rover is parked here beside me. I had a little six-year-old saying, Mama, can we get the Land Rover going? Mama, can we please drive the Land Rover? Mama, can you pick me up from school in the Land Rover? So I finally, <laughs> it's been sitting in that carport bay pretty much since he was a, a little guy. I uh, finally got it going. But we are back on old pickle the bus. Can't smack it too hard, it might collapse. I think I have all the parts that I need to kind of get us going for a while or keep us going for a while. Thanks to all of you and your outpouring of support over the pickle chips and the flooring pieces that I cut into states. Wow, you all stepped up. I, I am overwhelmed. <laughs> I was able to purchase pretty much one of everything we're going to need for a bit and if I have one I can probably make the other that's kind of way the way I looked at it so I can't thank you enough I mean because of you we can jump back on this uh, in pretty good a pretty good place so with that why don't we uh, why don't we get started back on old pickle bus well I think we're gonna get started on the very first thing is sweeping some of that up. It's got a lot of paper and mice nest material in it. And I'm going to go around the whole bus. All the, all the ribs are just kind of just kind of coated with a layer of, of dust and debris. So we'll sweep that all up so we're not inhaling it and we're not catching anything on fire before we kind of get going. Uh, I did take I had an old, like a, it was like a ambulance gurney is what it was. This aluminum thing that's right here, that was an ambulance gurney. It had fabric on it, and it's ex it extends, so it, each end, and then it locks. You just twist it, and it locks it. So it was like a folding gurney that was in a, an old ambulance. You know, I got it in an auction for a dollar. And the fabric was all kind of shredded, but the gurney thing fits perfect up there as a door holder. So we've got our other door up there. And the other awesome thing is right here, so right along there, it fits perfect along there. So I think I might even be able to use it as a cot for the little guy once we start kind of using the bus. Of course, he'll be 15 by then, so we won't be able to sleep on that. <laughs> I hope not, but just saying. So we got that door kind of out of our way for a bit. Hopefully it won't get banged up. You know, I'd hate to get a dent. I'd hate to get a dent in this perfect bus. And then I'm going to jump on to, or at least my plan is today, we'll see how it goes. Kind of jump on to what we're, how we're going to do this piece. I don't know if they cut a gas heater in there or what, but it'd be kind of nice to do that standing rather than kneeling in a floor. So I'm thinking I probably want to tackle that piece and probably this piece over here too. I did not do that. That was not me. But if we tackle that while we can just kind of stand up down here, I think that might be a little bit easier than kneeling with a floor in the bus. So probably start figuring out what we're going to do with that. And then at some point very, very soon, I need to jump on to fixing this creased area here. You can even see it popping out on the outside of the bus. Flash is probably killing us, but... Uh, my brace is there. I knew at some point that brace was going to have to come out because of this big crease. But I went ahead and put it there while we were putting the frame underneath it. So we'll cut that out and then I need to either put a heavy duty slide or use a jack or something and we'll get that 
kind of put back where it is supposed to go because what's happening with it bent there, it's popping the floor. So you can see it, it's popping the floor in, or not the floor, the pillar in, and we don't want that. And that is just a bunch of booger weld on top of booger weld, so I'm gonna have to probably spend some time cleaning that up too. But I figure right now, while this is attached to nothing, it would be the easiest time to kind of remove that. Somebody said, you know you've been in the shop too long, you start pointing, <laughs> pointing with your boots. <laughs> no. Guilty as charged, I guess. That looks a little better. I don't think I've ever swept out like that the inside of the bus. It's been flipped a couple times. I think I might have the, one of the very first videos where we had it on the rotisserie kind of swept it out, but it just looks a lot better. It's in pretty decent shape back here, shockingly. Uh, there's a board somebody has screwed into uh, the floor back here, or the cargo area. And where they have put it is on the rib on the body there. So it really doesn't stick through anywhere. I think I'm just gonna leave it for now. I may decide I like it. Basically, if you put something here, it keeps it from shifting forward and going bonk on the floor when you're driving. So I may decide that I kind of like that there. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. Of course, it's probably all rotted underneath there, but oh well. Let's go get, I'm going to go get a cutoff wheel or maybe a, the plasma cutter and get this brace, the one going down to the door, get that brace out of there. And I think we're going to start working on that and see if we can get that kind of straightened up a little bit. Yeah, let's go see if we can't get this brace cut free and start working on that. Let's see. I'm going to put that where it's not blinding you, but where I can see about right there. Watch the whole bus go collapsing down on me. All right, now we should be able to... Hey, I didn't even cut the floor. Look at that. Should be able to work on this a little bit. I'm trying to decide if I want to cut it all the way free. Down at the bottom. Yeah, let's just work on it a little bit, see how far we can go. I think I'm going to try putting a uh, sheet metal screw in there first, and we'll put the slide on it, slide hammer, and see if we can even budge it. I may not be able to even move it, but let's just see what we can do. If you are not familiar with this project, I encourage you to go fill yourself in, because there are lots of videos on this one junky old pickle the bus I have a screw in there I'm not sure that it's gonna be in there far enough but I didn't want to go through the outside of the bus if I could help it so I'm gonna try pull that back a little bit let me move you so I don't knock you over I opted for sitting you mostly outside hopefully don't knock you over That's what I was afraid was going to happen. It did move it out a little bit though. I just can't get a screw through there very far. I may have to weld something to it. 
They pulled it out quite a bit. <laughs> we got one shot, which is about what I figured we would get. Good thing I made that one count, huh? It may be enough if I go work with a hammer here on the side, which you can't see. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Came out quite a bit, actually. If I work, I'm getting in the shadow, but if I work right here and hit on that, you might be able to move it out enough to where I'm happy with it. Yeah, let's give it a whack. See what happens. What's the worst that can happen? We put a dent in it. There's already one there anyway. Let's try a small hammer first. out a little bit right here too. Probably can't see that. Yeah, that's helping a lot. We keep banging around on that for a few minutes. See if we can't get that really good. Yeah, it's shadow. Need to go get another uh, body hammer that has a flatter, not a point, but a flatter. I think if we give that maybe like two good whacks with a different body hammer. I think we've got that side. Shadow. Yeah, I we just need to work on. I think that's a better method than pulling out on it anyway. Work this crease down right here. I don't know if we'll be able to get that out. I'm not really concerned with that much about it. You can just get this one out. Yeah, I may have to weld something to that. Other than trying to put a sheet metal screw. That that never really works doing the sheet metal screw method. ways to go yet. Yeah, let me go get a, a hammer to work this. Can't see what I'm talking about. That side right there. And then I may try welding something to that. I think I can do it without blowing it out. It's pretty thin. Regardless, we got to work that right there and down here. We'll get a different hammer and we'll keep at it. Right here, let me see if I can get a light on that so you can see what I'm talking about. Right there where that kind of brownish spot is, that comes out. It's all caved in. So I'm thinking if we hit in the channel, in the door jam area, back towards the bus, we may be able to pull that out. And then if we hit we can't reach the inside where it's caved in right there. Can't reach it because it's where that the rib of the inside is protecting that so we can't get to it. But I'm thinking if we continue working on it using this raised portion, we might be able to get it. As good as we're going to get it. Anyway, so we are double hammering it. Let's put one of these on. See if we can break a Harbor Freight <laughs> set of body hammers. Oh, that's make that's I can feel that moving. moving the whole bus. You know, one of these times I'm gonna swing and this whole side's just gonna go collapse. Well, at least we'll get it on film. That's better. I'm looking at the body line of the bus, which you can't really see very well, unfortunately, where I have you. Getting there. Just slow. The wind is picking up. It's been 90 degrees all week long. Film. 
Temperature drops, wind picks up, makes it hard to hear. That's pretty good. <laughs> Amazing what you can just do with a little bit of hammer work. Now, we got that caved in spot. We're gonna have to weld something to it. Oh, that is getting there. What an improvement. Let's take a look at that from the side. I think a couple more good hits and we got it. I'm gonna flip you, hang on. Don't fall. Gonna keep you plugged in. Uh, light. Again, I'm looking to the outer, the outer body line here. It's much better. I don't know if that's coming through on film or not, but much better. So we need to focus on right there and right there. Wow. Still need a good hit here. Probably gonna have to use a two by four or something. Gonna straighten that out, but that is a vast improvement. Yeah. Cool. Good thing about Volkswagen metal in this era, it's soft. The bad thing about Volkswagen metal from this era, it's soft. And it's getting there. This rain is just uh, relentless. <laughs> I don't know if this tool is going to work or not, but may have to actually weld something to that. I'm trying to not do that. It's just going to keep blowing out. And of course, a uh, sheet metal screw is just going to keep pulling through. So I may have to go to one thread bigger sheet metal screw. I'll try one more size, but after that, we're probably about done. Sometimes! You, uh, you get blinded by the light. <laughs> Sometimes you don't have the right tool and you just have to go make your own tool. So I have made a pair of vice grips welded to a rod that is then welded to a plate I can hit with a hammer. Whoa. Oh, look at that. Well, we got three hits on that one. It's pretty good. It worked, too. So, I will try hitting out that a couple more times. And then we are probably done. As far as we're going to get that one. Yeah, and then we'll just, I'll work on trying to hit that with a double hammer method here. Maybe if I move the screw over just a little bit, you might get one pull on it. Okay. It's probably just gonna pull out after one whack, but we can get one. It's better than none. When I was welding these vice grips. They're still hot, which is kind of nice because my hands are cold. There. Get my foot up there again. I might get two hits out of it. We can build up any kind of pressure. It's getting loosey-goosey. 
Let me see you see. Let me tighten it up on it a little bit. Oh, that didn't sound very good, did it? <laughs> Oh, that was nice. And hopefully you can see what's happening in there. You got it. Mostly. Oops, sorry. Much better. Maybe go for over here. Right beside it. How many holes does it take to pull out a dent? A lot. Sometimes it's better to go with a smaller screw, but this already had a hole in it that was that size when we first threw that first one in. Oh, forgot to put the brace back up. Dang it. We bookered that up pretty good, didn't we? But it is much better. So I think if I just work there now, maybe go one more time above it and pull out. We have it. It wasn't so bad. And I have a new tool. <laughs> Necessity is the mother of invention. As my mom always says. Yeah, I think if we keep at it, Maybe put a couple smaller screws up above and work that dent up above. So we can always grind these off and weld them back up. So if we go right above it, I think we pretty well got it. It looks ugly. And then I'll work by hitting towards the back of the bus. I'll work on this corner right here after we kind of pull that out up above it. Looks much better. I even worked on this a little bit. I don't know if that looks any better to you or not, but it's to me. Sweet! Getting there. Yeah, I don't know. This is really getting kind of annoying. It's blowing in on me. Annoying. Well, that is about to the point where I can live with it. There is a crease also on the outside right here that I'm going to go work on a little bit. But the whole door jam area is kind of twisted in. So I'm going to use uh, my new tool because it doubles <laughs> as in another tool. as a pair of vice grips or pliers or whatever. Let me get the camera in here and see if I can show you what I'm talking about here on the roll. The crease on the inside is much improved. Let's see if we can see that. Yeah. Right up above. The whole thing starts to roll in about right there. Really hard to see, but I think if I could put those that vice grip on and peel it back this way, we've about got that where it's livable. This roll right here is much, much better. And even inside is better. Again, I don't know how much of that's coming through on camera. And the paint, the missing paint is kind of throwing everything off too for you guys and gals. The dent, I got the dent worked in. So that dent that was right there, I got it worked in this way. So again, I say it's amazing what you can do with just, you know, small little hits with a hammer. Okay, let's see if we can roll 
see if we can roll that back out a little bit. And it gets worse the further it gets down, it turns in. Uh, right here. Yeah, see if we can work on that just a little bit. With my multi-tool, my new multi-tool. <laughs> I love coming up with excuses to go in and make tools. Uh, no good vice grips were harmed in the making of the tool. I had to actually put a spring in this pair. They ran, it was in an auction pile that I'd picked up and the spring was missing. But they are craftsmen. Just saying. But they're not in the best of shape. But let's see if we can't cool thing about this is it gives me plenty of leverage. Oh, I had to put a little bend in it. So there's a kink in the pipe or the round rod that I put on there. That left enough of a gap to where my, my adjuster would move. So it just has a little bend. Not a novel idea. I've seen people do uh, vice grips and things like that with slide hammers. All right, that's working good. The cool thing is it gives me plenty, I got plenty of leverage to work with. There goes my OG paint. Yeah. We're gonna have a lot of feathering to do anyway. And I'm not crimping it straight on, because straight on I think would just kind of crush it. So I'm trying to grab inside and then roll it out. Yeah, that's working pretty well. Surprisingly, when I shut this door yesterday, I was kind of playing around on a couple of previous episodes trying to free up the... There's, there are little um, the rods that go out when you move the handle were seized on this door. They wouldn't move. They now move, and they actually lined up with the holes on the top and bottom. I couldn't believe it. Now that I've farted around with this thing, <laughs> they probably won't. And the body line up here, I'll show you here in just a second where that rib line is on the outside of the bus. Well, it's on the inside too, but the line that's the iconic bus line there in the middle of the side is cracked and split. So we're gonna have to do some work on that. We're about to get this spot right here. Getting close. Oh, you're in the way. Hang on just a second. I plug you in, your battery is beeping. Still got a little bit of a roll down here. Like I said, this stuff is so soft. It's gonna be kind of gentle with it. I'm always amazed at how strong a Volkswagen is when it's together, when all the pieces are where they're supposed to be. We're going to be doing some work down here anyway, so I'm not going to get too crazy serious with how straight that is down there. Just kind of focusing on the areas up here. I'm going to have to get two pair of pliers right there because that's wanting to buckle. So, that looks much better. That spot right there, I'll have to get a second set. Yeah, it's just going to pull out more. It's kind of rolled in right there is what the deal is. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's take a peek. Sorry, I'm competing against the rain here. Let's take a peek down this line. 
So right here is where I'm looking. Yeah, that's pretty good. The only part is, and I don't know if you can see that right there. Probably not. I need to shut the door and give it one hit right there. The one hit wonder. And then everything in here looks much better. Well, that is much improved. I do not know how much of that is showing up for y'all, but what a difference. I'm focusing on the outer part of the body line here and that door channel. The, the uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> the door jam, I guess. The seal channel. vast improvement. There's still a kink right at the initial point of contact, but let me hop Let me hop around on the other side and I'll show you how much better even the inside looks. And again, I don't really care that the inside is perfect, or the outside for that matter. I wouldn't have tackled this project. I kind of like to celebrate the imperfections a little bit, but that body line is much better. We'll try and shut the door here in just a second and we'll see if it will actually close. It probably won't close now <laughs> that I've messed with it. But let me take you uh, so you can see the other side, and I'll show you how much better that is. By the way, this little light here, Cyclops, Maxion, 810. A YouTuber recommended it. This thing is awesome. It's USB rechargeable, has a magnet on it, and it pivots, and it tells you, it has a battery meter on it, tells you how much charge is left. It has three beams. There's, I have my flash on my camera too. One, two, three. I love it. It. I even use it on my work table when I'm welding. This thing works great. So I'm gonna put it right here, and we're gonna shine it on that area, and I'm gonna take you back around so you can get a good view of it and see the difference that just that little bit of work made on that area right there. So that was our initial crease. Just working on it just a little bit with a hammer and a homemade slide <laughs> or a homemade uh, beater bar or whatever you want to call it. Uh, beater grip. I don't know. What a difference. And you can even tell in the outside how much better it is. Let's see if the door closes all the way. <laughs> now's the now's the real test. I did oil. Uh, all of this was seized up, and you can see those slides are now moving. Maybe you can see it. Probably see it better up here. And before those wouldn't move at all, they were seized up in the door. Both of them are moving. Let's see if we can get both of them to latch. So there's a a slit here and here that those have to go into. So let's see if we can hit them. Ha! The door gap's actually not bad at all. You can see where the paint's kind of, or the dust is rubbed off where I kind of was working in that area. It's a little bit banged up right there, but not terrible. I can totally live with that. That looks pretty good. Let's look down the line here. Yeah. We can live with that. And the door is latching at both points. I can't believe that either. Down there? How? I don't know. But it's working! Cool. Well, with that... I think we're going to call that section, for now anyway, good to go. So we're ready to hop on to the next problem. There are plenty, don't worry, we're not going to run out for a while. <laughs> but it is kind of chilly out here, and I think I'm going to call this one right there. It wasn't much of a video, I do apologize for that. I think the next thing we'll work on is right over here, where hopefully I'm not standing in water when I go to work on it. And we'll just probably go ahead and do both of these at the same time. Like I said, 
standing here to work on it is going to be much easier than kneeling when the floor is where my hand is trying to fix it. And there is a patch that we need to do on the inside flooring as well. I don't know if it's on this side or not. So right there on the driver's side we need to fix as well. So with that, again, not much of a video. We got to make a tool. Somebody come up with a name for that. <laughs> again, not a novel idea, but get to make a tool. We got a door jam that actually does work now. And we pulled that crease out. I will say using for this metal anyway, using the smaller threaded screw worked better. So we just got a little bit of repair to go back and kind of grind off and patch over that. But all in all, it's way better than it did. I wish I had taken that shot right there before we did anything, but I didn't. So we got this shot. All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. I truly appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who's contributed to this project and continues to follow along. I promise we're on it for a little while now. I'm anxious to get it going. It's going to be a long time before it's on the road, but hopefully sooner than later. There's an aerial view for you of the mess that is Pickle the Bus. <laughs> yeah, my lips are kind of starting to get purple. When I turned the camera around, I was a little chilly and looked in the camera. I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to call it on this one, folks. I know it wasn't a super informative video, but we got to make a tool. We got to pull out a dent. And we're one dent closer to having this old bus on the road. I truly appreciate you being here. We got a long haul on this project, but I promise we're back on it for a while. Peace out, everyone. We'll see you next time. Well, I've been kind of busy. I have a show coming up, so I cut some saws. Not much good for cutting lumber anymore after I get done with them. Uh, this one's kind of hard to see this cabin with the deer. Let me pull that one up, stick it up into the sky. Maybe you can see it, get the right grip on it here. It kind of looks like a cabin, an old dilapidated cabin in the woods with my deer. So laying down here on the concrete, they, they don't really show all the stuff that you can see when they're on a lighter background. Put that one up. So with a little bit of light behind them, they look pretty cool. I cut nine saws, four shovels, and that little small trowel on one plasma tip one set of consumables. So I think I'm improving a little bit maybe. Before that would have taken me a lot more than one. This one's a vintage camper with a fisherman down in the water. Probably my least favorite. Kind of fun. I kind of enjoy doing them. Got a limited, you know, a limited space you can work on. It kind of <laughs> forces you to be a little bit creative. This one's kind of a neat one too. Little hunter and his dog. And some cattails. I had more, but I, I blasted a couple of them off accidentally. And I don't think it needs to have them welded back in, so I just let it go. The barn one. It does kind of look like corn, though. Tractor's not that great on that one. So hopefully those sell fairly well at this show. Got a lot of uh, a lot of time just kind of oiling them and cleaning the saws up themselves. The cutting part, for those of you who are plasma cutters, know that that doesn't take that long. Here we go. We'll get those to the show. 
These are the shovels I do. Put a tire swing on them. This one I put a little bit of patina. So it just got a little hint of green on it for those folks that can't use their imagination, but it's one of them. I will get the other, the others. Here's another one. I'm shooting you right into the sun. We move in here. Got a little, little tree growing up beside it there in the sun or in the blue part of the sky there. Yeah, just kind of fun. This one I'll probably put a swing on instead of a tire swing. Just put, I use uh, the wooden rulers that fold out. Just put a, a tree swing on it, a board swing. So that's what I do in my spare time.